We're now going to briefly talk about some extended techniques that we've got available on the instrument. Um, what we've got, we understand firstly what the instrument is and how it works to work out what extended techniques we can get out of it. So we'll just look at a few of them, talk about them, I'll try and demonstrate them. Some of them are a little bit tricky and they're not called upon an awful lot for players to use within writing. I've never played a concerto so far that's asked me to imply multiphonics. I've never played a concerto so far that's asked me to hit the instrument. I've never played a concerto that's asked me to flutter tongue. But these can be used by composers and they often come out um, in various works and you've got to be able to do them. So we'll have a little look at them. If I, I'm not great at them, but if I was ever asked to do it, um, I'd certainly rehearse them and get them up to the right um, standard for that work. But it's not something that would spend a huge amount of time doing. So here we go, let's have a little look at the first one. I keep thinking I'm going to play something, but I'm not. Um, we'll have a look at the hitting the instrument. So, if we hit the instrument in different areas. We can get different sounds. And we're going to talk about Oyston Bazovic at the moment. He's the guy that wrote Fnug, uh, the solo that uses multiphonics. Uses a bit of beatboxing as well in it, which we'll go on in a minute or two. There's another uh, piece he's written called New Kid, where I put a link in the blog that I'm doing, where he hits the instrument, so he's playing away and then gives. And as you can hear, it rings out. So that's the first sort of extended technique. Hitting different areas, hit it with different things as well. Might actually be called upon for writing. I haven't used any of that in any of the arrangements because it's not really appropriate to be playing high in the trumpet concerto and then slap the tuba midway through or any of the works that I've done haven't been appropriate to use but I was maybe doing something that was composing something modern you could have all the bass players working as percussion instruments and of course everyone in the band despite um, being tuba players or being bass players also can sing, can clap there's a lot more to musicians than just playing an instrument when they're sitting in front of you. So there's a huge wide range, of pal a huge palette that composers can use nowadays, or it's more seen to be used nowadays for writing. So let's move on to the next one. Um, I'll talk about just blowing some air through the instrument. So what we're doing is coming the end of the mouthpiece. Nigel Hess is used a bit of this. I can't remember, I don't think he'd done it on the instruments. They got everyone. He wrote a piece called Stevenson's Rocket and he got everyone to go. And it was supposed to imitate the steam train and imitate the sort of pistons, the steam coming out of the pistons. There's a famous fame arrangement of the Ticket to Ride. I can't remember exactly who it's by, but it's used in a brass band and you just go. And it lasts for semi breaks quite hard because there's no resistance on the instrument, so you're then just expanding here. But that's one out, one way. And again, moving different valves, I can get a different pitch. Not using any of the arrangements I've done because, again, it's not appropriate to the works. You could also take things off the instrument, and that would change the pitch. Looking at just ways of employing the instrument, it's not normal, they're not normally used, and extending the sort of palette of colours we can get out of it. The next one, singing through the instrument. So if I don't play and sing. you can get out of it doing it in that. It's an amplifier, you could be asked to sing a set note through the instrument. Why do you bother playing them when you can do that? So you could be asked to sing a certain tone through the instrument and that would just be an, again different amplification of the human voice. One of the pieces that played is called Santa Across the Throat Breaker, and it's got a famous tuba part that's basically meant to be a horse noise, and all we do is start quite high, and we go... I think. 
can't remember. Look at that, you do it as a pitch. So you go. <laughs> it's done like that, it's not done singing. But you could do it singing as well. <laughs> so it's, that's not so much extended technique that's going away up the top of the register and back down. But you could do it. <laughs> and it would do the same thing. The next one's singing while it's playing. We'll move through it quite um, steadily and productively. So what we do is we sing and buzz. And it'll give us this buzzing effect. We'll see if it works. It sometimes doesn't with me. Slight vibration. I'll put a link for someone doing it a little bit better than I can. So you can hear there it comes through, and you get the overtones. The instruments, as like piano, hitting two, three strings at once. When you play a brass instrument, you do the same thing, and the overtones of the instrument amplify that. So that's what the singing does. I'll put the link up to Fnug so you can see that a little bit demonstrate better. That's called multiphonics. Um, one that's not so controversial would be putting a mute in the instrument. Um, we went over it for Paris Angelicus, what we're going to do with that. Put the mute in the instrument, takes a little bit of the brightness off the sound. So it's a different tone, you get it all on the tone using something that's not normally used. Last thing we're going to talk about is beatboxing. If I hit the instrument with my hand, you get this kind of bob bob effect. If I try and do it with notes, See, you can get the amplification. It's done a little bit slightly differently. Um, you can do it playing a really low note and forcing from your stomach, but it's just using that column of air is the best way to describe it. I think it features in Fnug Blue, so I'll put that link up and you can have a look at someone doing it in context because um, I'm not the greatest at it. But that lets you see some of the extended technique available on the tuba. I think I've covered it all. We've covered um, beatboxing. Covered singing through the instrument, we've covered singing and playing through the instrument, we've covered the mute, we've covered blowing some air through, and we've covered taking parts off, making it slightly different, and we've also covered um, just hitting things. The valves could be used as a percussion instrument as well. That kind of effect. Um, some composers use it, some composers like it, some composers don't, so they don't use it obviously. Um, I applied recently for a project that Tinderbox are doing, unfortunately it was unsuccessful. One of the things they were looking at that was quite interested in was that they were going to change how the instruments are played. So by perhaps applying solenoids, applying electronics, you could change how the instrument's played and how it sounds. And that was quite interesting, I thought, um, from doing that because, you know, we're only human. When you start to put a robot in the end of it, you could then end up with endless, you know, can someone... Um, would it be an amplifier, a sort of buzzer effect that takes over from the lips and then someone plays on it? Would it then be something that you could program in to play at a speed that you can't play on the instrument? You are limited with how quick the valves come back up. So that pressure would have to be worked out. But it would be quite an interesting thing to do is to basically make, change the instrument and take so much of the human element out of it. And that's really starting to go quite extensively into extended technique and more digital and electronic music. So that's just a few examples of extended techniques. We've not used any in the compositions because I didn't feel it was appropriate, but they are there and are available for people to use. It's developed with the repertoire that's been put out. Um, I'll try and find a few examples other than Oyston Bazovics because he does a lot of it. And I can't really think of anyone else that does that have done um, extended technique used. I have played in a show where I've had to use a mute. Um, I haven't had to flutter tongue. That's the other one, flutter tongue. 
Um, what we do is we put the tongue, so it's using the tongue behind the lips, um, and we just let it go. And changes that. So it's sort of losing control of the tongue, letting it vibrate, and you get that buzzing effect. So that's flip tongue and um, used in jazz a lot as it's muted instruments. So that's a overview of extended techniques on the instrument.